Hello and welcome to Benz Addiction. This is a Mercedes M272 engine and I have a squeaking noise coming from my serpentine belt. Basically in this video we are going to find out why the belt is squeaking and find the solution and try four methods in order to fix that harmonic balancer in there in order to remove that tough bolt and this is applied to any Mercedes Benz made from 2000 to 2020. So stay tuned. So what I did here, I just sprayed some water to the harmonic balancer and it actually stopped the squeak. So it's about uh, 20 minutes and the noise is completely gone. I have set my measuring uh, dial over here and it set it to zero. It's pointing uh, to the lip of the harmonic balancer. I just want to see how much of imbalance I do get if I turn this uh, harmonic balancer by one turn. And that would give you an indication of how much is too much and how much might cause you to get some sort of noise from your serpentine belt. Okay, number 27, one complete turn on the dial would be one millimeter of imbalance. That's point 0.1 so far. Point 0.2 of imbalance. Point 0.3 of millimeter. I think that's it. That's enough for me to understand how much we have imbalance over here and that's 0 0.3 of millimeter which is too much for a har harmonic balancer the distance between serpentine belt and this edge over here uh, when the engine rotates it, this gap gets bigger and smaller and that's how it interacts with the edge of the harmonic balancer and make all that noise The first method of locking the pulley in place is using one of these tools but the downside is if you buy these you probably end up only using it once and you have to pay like hundred dollars for this tool. The second way is opening up this window underneath the flywheel and torque converter. So if you remove this uh, rubber cover from the transmission side underneath the car where the flywheel and the torque converter is and if you look from this side you will see the flywheel teeth if you can somehow lock up those flywheel teeth uh, using these two bolts so you basically need to uh, build a tool to be able to remove these two bolts and then use that tool with a bracket to lock the flywheel that will be another method to remove the crankshaft pulley bolt. Now I'm going to use this method, the ratchet tie down method, to tie down the main pulley, the crank pulley, and then try to open it using a breaker bar and an extension. I think that's the setup I have been waiting for. It's now need a very good pull on the extension oh my god so so tough this bolt uh, this method is holding the pulley very well but I don't have the power I'm using a 90 centimeter like three foot long extension breaker bar and it's not working. Okay, fuel pump is number 57. 57 is over here in the boot area. 57, 20 amp. That's this one over here. La 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 la. 
This is the starter relay. Let's pull this out. And now let's try to start the engine. There should be no starting. Yep, that's what I wanted. Looking at this chart, we can see that number 30 and number 87 should contact in order for a start. So we got 87 and we got 30. That one and this one. The ignition is not on, but let's... I've got nothing there. It's okay to try to start. Let's try this. All we need to do... Ignition on. So all we need is... As you can see, there is a screwdriver in that hole on the chassis that is supporting uh, the lateral movement of the breaker bar. There is a cable tie as well. There is that chassis piece that is not letting that uh, breaker bar to go to the left and right. And it's very, very secure. There is no way this can move anywhere at all. So we know together that the crankshaft pulley uh, rotation direction is towards the um, clockwise so it's clockwise and it's going to rotate the bolt anti-clockwise and it's going to open the bolt for us I'm going to uh, set the camera over here and use the starter just make sure you stay away and uh, safety is first you stay safe and secure out of the way of all this uh, danger zone so let's do this bad boy is very tight. I'm giving the battery a bit of boost. Hopefully that will solve the issue. Okay, I think this thing actually finally worked. Unfortunately, I did this off the camera, but here is the setup. I haven't changed anything. Uh, that vice grip over there that makes sure that that uh, belt or is not slipping and that's a very good uh, way of doing this I really highly recommend because I wasted too much time because that belt was slipping but no longer so I have used this rag because I didn't want this uh, belt to be torn because we got some sharp edges there and as you can see I have spun it over uh, I've rotated over the uh, chassis over there. So it's a very basic setup and I've got a 90 centimeter uh, three foot long breaker bar and of course 27 millimeter socket plus extension. So this finally worked, but I gave it a real good, you know, last power to really do this. So yeah, I think it's completely loose now. Yep, done. Look at this, oh my god. Doesn't even have Loctite on it. That's it. Okay, I can't see any uh, difference over here. And so obviously uh, we checked this uh, with a uh, dial indicator and it was off the balance. So that's why it was making all that squeaking noise. So let's go ahead and replace that and we will tighten the bolt, the crank bolt, the same uh, with the same method that we actually opened it. It's a good time to clean up this area. It's a good time to replace this seal over here. I have no issue over here. It's not causing any drama so I'm not going to replace the seal but definitely go ahead and replace this seal if you have some sort of oil leak from here because you don't want to take off that bolt again
Okay, I think the torque setting for this one is 150 Newton meter plus 90 degree. But my formula is go as hard as you can in tightening up. If you want, you can use torque meter too. Okay, basically I have used the same belt because I want to see with keeping the belt the same, Will it stop the squeaking by only replacing the crankshaft pulley? That's the idea. I just want to show you the real issue was the harmonic balancer, not the belt. The belt is in place. Let's release the idler. And it's done. Okay guys, as you can see, everything is sounding good and looking good. And I'm very happy about the results. Thanks so much again for watching, liking, subscribing. Have a great day and enjoy your Mercedes. Let's go.